everything. Not everything. What have you been doing? Relaxing. You've been glued to those binoculars four solid hours. Different for you. You've been all over the world. I've never been out of Canada. This is terrific. Remember to tell your uncle. Maybe he'll raise my salary. Yeah, I suppose it is a nuisance for you, really, taking me on a trip like this. Not a bit. I'm glad of the company. As long as you don't get yourself killed. David, what happened to Naden was an accident. I mean, how was I to know the rope was going to break? Well, all I know is you almost ended up on the receiving end of 20 tons of cargo. And I'd have had a hard time explaining that to your uncle. <laughs> Don't tell me you're stopping this waterlogged old death trap you call a ship because of one single hippo. Mr. Moore, I've no intentions of getting a hole in this uh, waterlogged old death trap just because you are a few minutes late into Edwardstone. I'm a week late. I'm as eager to get there as you are. My last. And if that's one single hippo, I'll take the pledge. <laughs> Don't you? I was only trying to see you. is coming. I thought I had it. Hand me the soap, Kishango. I dropped it. Juana, the boat will be here in a few minutes. Maybe the white men are on board. Mm, I imagine they are. You go down and meet them, Mr. Quartermain, sir. This is correct. No, you go down to meet them. This is not correct. What did I have you educated for, Kishango? So that you could pick up all the white man's most worthless values? But Mr. Quatermain, sir, these men will be very angry if only met by me. Yeah. I imagine they will be. Then you come. Plenty no. of time if you hurry now. No. Tell them I'm busy. You better get going, Kasango. Or they won't be met by anyone. Most incorrect. Antonio Villeda at your service. I think maybe you are a white man who need a good guide. Villeda, best guide in all East Africa. Oh, ex, we already well, have your one. hunters may be, huh? Villeda know all the water holes, all the best places where the animals are. <laughs> Mr. Moore, please. Yes. And uh, Mr. Perez? <laughs> Welcome to Edwards Town on behalf of Mr. Quartermain. Uh, Mr. Quartermain, very busy. Very sad he cannot come in person. Oh, yes, you have fine guide, all right. He cannot even come down to meet you. There's more of our stuff in the hole. Uh, later, sir. I will arrange all. This way, please. I think he might have come himself. He's being paid enough. I wonder why he didn't. Excuse me for not coming down to the boat. Your boy told us you were busy. <laughs> Some drinks, please, Cassango. Mr. Moore? What a pleasure. Mr. Ferris. Hello. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. 
I hope you had a good journey. A slow one. I'm over a week late. I'd like you to get me up to Ambuto as quickly as possible. Oh, yes, I had this letter from London. From the firm of Ferris McKinley. Ferris? O'Brien is Sir Gerald's nephew. <laughs> we sincerely hope that you will be available to guide our Mr. David Moore to the railhead at Ambuto by the shortest possible route. Surely it would have been quicker for you to have followed your railway from Mombasa. Oh, apparently not. There have been landslides. We cannot stress enough the urgency of the mission. Why is it so urgent, Mr. Moore? They failed to tunnel through the Ambuto Mountains. The chief engineer is down with malaria, so I'm going up to plan a new route, and I want to start first thing. Well, it's a pity they didn't give me time to reply to this letter. You see, I find myself quite unable to act as your guide. No, it's not the leg. I got that from an old rhino about ten years ago. Then what exactly do you mean? What I say. I'm sorry, I'm not going to act as your guide. Do you realize what you're being offered to do this? Money has very little meaning here, my boy. You're the best guide in all of East Africa. This is a very tricky journey. We need you. I'm sorry. Now, uh, Kisango will take you over to the lodging house as soon as you've finished your drinks. If there's anything you want, please ask him. Why won't you guide us, Mr. Quartermain? My reason is purely personal. Don't you think we have a right to know what it is? Very well. I'm against your railway, Mr. Moore. I don't think Africa needs men like you or the improvements you bring with you. What utter nonsense. I was told you were eccentric, sir, but really... Oh, no, so it's eccentric to love a country and its people. To love their freedom, their innocence and their beauty and not to want to see them spoiled. It's eccentric to stand in the way of progress and stupid. I visited your railway, Mr. Moore. I've seen your progress. I've seen what happens to these people when they come up against the white man's values and his liquor. Mr. Quarterman, I've had this argument with cranks and crackpots all over the world. Huh? Yes, that's what you are if you think we're wrong to be helping Africa out of the Stone Age and into the modern world. What's so wonderful about your precious modern world, Mr. Moore? Are you happy? No, really. Are you a happy man, Mr. Moore? No, of course you aren't. The African is. Poor, backward, uneducated, full of all kinds of weird beliefs, but happy. Mr. Quartermain, I have a job to do. There are 2,000 men sitting idle up at Ambuto. Every day they do so costs thousands of pounds. I intend to get there as quickly as possible and put them to work again. You may be the best guide in the area, but you're certainly not the only one. Come on, Brian. Out of the jungle. First thing you'd know would be a bullet in your back. Come on, Ruth. We heard a rumor they were in the area before we left the mission. Then you should never have tried to make the journey. We knew the boat would be in. We needed medical supplies. We had to have them. Slavers in this day and age? I thought they'd been exterminated. Is that what the papers tell you in Europe? 
They're worse than they ever were. Well, why would they attack your party? You say you had only eight men. Eight trained men. That's the point. The man who's been taught to work in the house or in the fields fetches six times the price of the others. Selling human beings. Isn't anyone doing anything about it? There are people who try, a few hundred, in an area that covers millions of square miles. I'd better get washed up. I must look a sight. A very pleasant sight. If you're heading for Ambutu, you mustn't start tomorrow. Give them time to clear. They're dangerous. I believe we can take care of ourselves. I don't think you realize what these men are like. They live by selling their fellow human beings. Killing means nothing to them. Well, we've wasted enough time as it is. We'll find another guide and get moving first thing in the morning. Ruth, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Jack, you can't let them go. They don't know this country. <laughs> I have an idea that nobody changes Mr. David Moore's mind once it's made up. I wouldn't be too sure about that. found a guide yet? Some people call him a guide, Miss Ruth. Not me. Delado, I suppose. That's right, Miss Ruth. Delado. All right, it's a deal. Now, how many days to Amputu? Oh, five, six days, senor. Depends on how fast you can track. Well, as fast as you can, I guess. Oh, I don't doubt that, senor. Senor is a man after Delado's own heart, but... Uh, See, I, I think of the boy. He's, he's young. Oh, he'll be all right. You just plan the quickest route. All right. All will be arranged. Villetto will get you best, boys. Big, strong. Uh, you have much baggage? Well, very little. The only heavy thing is some dynamite I'm taking up to the railhead. Uh, six boys should manage it. All right. Five o'clock in the morning, senor. We'll be ready. Trust Villetto, eh? Oh, there is, uh, there is one small point uh, of no importance. I shall... Uh, well, you know how it is. I mean, there'll be a number of expenses, nothing, nothing great, but... How uh, much? Oh, I leave that to the senor. The senor is a man of experience. Uh, let's say, uh, 50, huh? Well, let's say 20. In advance of salary. <laughs> 20. Oh, the senor is most, most kind. quite good. Look, I know you and Jack Quartermain had a row today, but please take his advice. Stay here until those men have left the area. I'm glad you're so concerned about our safety. You don't know Africa. Jack does, and I do. I was born here. Will you please stay? It won't be more than a couple of days. Tell me, how do, you, uh, how do you come to be working at a mission of all places? Well, why shouldn't I? Rather dull for a pretty girl like you, isn't it? And say the stupidest thing. Why should it be any duller for a pretty girl than a plain one? Well, if you don't know, I'm certainly not going to tell you. My father was doctor at the mission. And when he died, I decided to stay on and work with his successor. I love Africa. I don't suppose you understand that. 
Why shouldn't I? I have a feeling you don't love anything or anybody except your work and yourself. Well, <laughs> that's a nice thing to say. <laughs> have I hurt your feelings? You're very beautiful when you laugh. It's a pity you did that. Didn't you like it? I liked it as much as if you'd said I've absolutely no respect for women. But I have. Oh, no. And you've just proved it to me. Oh, wait a minute. You kissed me as if you'd found me prowling up and down the waterfront at Mombasa. Ruth. Miss Knight to you, Mr. Moore. Now, oh, just a minute. I may work in an out-of-the-way mission, and I may see very few men. Will you listen to me But I don't happen to share your opinion that you're indispensable to women. I hope you get to Ambutu safely, but since you're incapable of taking advice, I very much doubt it. Good night. Don't tell me you're going on safari as well. It looks that way, doesn't it? I thought it was far too dangerous with all these uh, terrible slavers around. It is. However, there are one or two differences between your journey and mine. In the first place, mine is an urgent one. Well, I happen to think that mine is too. In the second place, I am going out of the danger area, and you're going into it. Are you trying to tell me that they keep to a defined area? Oh, yes. In the sense that uninhabited country doesn't interest them. There are no uh, villages on my route. You're not taking her. As a matter of fact, she's taking me. There's fever at the mission. I have to get these supplies back to the hospital as soon as I can. She's a very strong-minded young woman, as I believe you found out for yourself. What are you gripping at? Gwen Denny. Boko. Good luck. David? Mm hmm? I think I ought to say that I saw what happened last night. What did happen last night? Between you and Ruth. Oh, that. <laughs> she really told me where to get off, didn't she? You really don't care, do you? Why should I? Because she's a lovely girl. Brian, I read somewhere that there are at this moment something like uh, 10,000 million women in this world. Let's say half of them were born lovely. That's 5,000 million. Let's say half of the lovely ones are ready to play games. That's 2,500 million. Why bother your head about the virtuous ones like Miss Ruth Knight? Life's too short. Now you're worrying about him. Yes, I am. It's absurd, isn't it? A man like that isn't worth it. I didn't say I was worrying about David. The other's only a boy. And a nice boy. Ruth, Ruth. Who do you think you're fooling? All right, I'm an idiot. He's an attractive man, and that's a species I don't see many of. Is that what you mean? I mean what I say. He isn't worth worrying about. Oh, Jack. Jack. Who do you think you're fooling? There isn't a man alive you wouldn't think worth worrying about if he was in danger. <laughs> you know, the only thing that's wrong with our relationship is that we know each other too well. David, it was a perfectly harmless. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Maybe not, but flies don't have your ability for getting hurt.
Very excellent campsite, senor. We make stop here. No, it's too early. Boys very tired, senor. It's bad make boys too tired first day out. Any old hand tell you this. Look, we make better time tomorrow, senor, if boys get good rest now, huh? All right. Simana, Simana. Play a half a hammer. Well, doesn't seem much doubt about who needs a rest. Well, we have not do badly. Toledo? When can we get back to the veld? We make good time there. Oh, early tomorrow, senor. And don't forget, this is excellent shortcut. yourself killed. It was a little baby chimp. Well, that's the oddest looking little baby chimp I've ever seen. Oh, honestly, David, there was this little baby chimp that was... The next time you want to look at little baby chimps, use your binoculars. I want to get you back to your uncle in one piece, not as a stuffed trophy to hang over the mantel. Ask one of the boys. I'm not going to show origami, huh? Not going to show origami. What do they say, Kasanga? Slave hunters, Buana. What about them, Kasanga? Them Sabakuzi, the Matu Watega. Slave hunters are at Lubaki. Lubaki? Not on their route, my dear. No, but it's near. Yeah. Yeah. Strange Valedo doesn't know what the Jones are saying. I'm not so sure he doesn't. I think I saw something else. You're imagining things. Those drums are jangling your nerves. Well, six Africans. Good, strong. And white men? Three. We can manage them. My friend, you are a fool. Six Africans and three white men. Three guns. Baki village are 60 Africans. No white men. No guns. We attack Lubaki as soon as it is dark. <laughs> What is it? 
How to even keep watch properly? Hey, Valido! The boys, they're gone. That lousy son of a Portuguese. They've all gone. <laughs> Brian, into your boots. Let's get out of here. Last is the Now take these canteens, Brian, and fill them. Fill anything you can find. All right. All right. No thanks to Valedo. The devil couldn't help him if I ever get my hands on him. I wonder where he went. Why? Well, he probably woke up, all the Africans gone. They were pretty frightened when they heard those drums. Oh, well, he took the hint and disappeared. I don't know why he didn't stick a knife in this while he was about it. What now, David? Don't have much choice. We've tried to find our way back to Edwardstown. We should have listened to Quartermain and Ruth. Well, let's face it, David, they were right. And isn't he gonna let us know it when we get back? If we get back. So then we gotta stop. I'm all right, David. I'm good for a while. Oh, it's getting dark. Let's stop.
makes little difference if we finish it now or in the morning. Anyway, we'll find a water hole in the morning. <laughs> We've got to. Brian? I really got you into a mess, didn't I? Let me say this. I'll feel better if I do. You're right. Should have listened to Quartermain. You wanted to get to the railhead. You wanted to get on with your job. No, I don't think that needs any excuses, David. Hey. Do you remember what my uncle said that day in London when he handed me over to you? He said, this will make a man of you, my boy. did you find us? We saw the fire. And you shot an elephant, didn't you? How did you know that? Ivory's valuable here. The news of a dead elephant travels fast. Since the slavers have moved on and there aren't any other white men in the area, we reasoned you had killed it. A lucky thing that I did. There's none within 30 miles. And then you have to know where to look. I still don't know how you managed to find this. Luckily, Mr. Quartermain has good friends. You can give us one of your boys to guide us. I'm not letting you take a four-day trek across this country with only one man. Then give us more. You can spare them. No. Look, you saved our lives, and I won't forget it, but how can you be so petty? Petty? Yes, petty. Well, you can delay us, yes. But you know full well you can't stop us from building that railway. I'm not thinking of your railway. I'm thinking of your survival. Well, that's my risk, isn't it? Brian can go with you and then join me later. Oh, no, he can't. This is a pointless argument, Mr. Moore. I am not breaking up this safari. It'll take us two days to reach the mission. You'll find a guide there. A week from today, you'll be at your railhead. You'll come with us. There's no alternative. Quarterman, you're the worst loser I ever met. What makes you think I'm the loser? Anyone who stands in the way of progress ultimately loses. Better side with him, Brian. He's your uncle's best engineer. Thanks, Mr. Quartermain, but I've got a mind of my own. Well, what's on your mind? I am worried about the correctness of a point. You usually are. Why do you dislike this railway which the Buona Moor will build? This railway 
It's only the first of many such things that the white man will bring. Things that I think will spoil Africa, change her for the worse. Yet you send Kasango to be educated. Is not the railway the same as sending me to be educated? I think that one day Africa will have many railways, many educated people, as in your country. You like that, Kasango? Yes, very much. Like you, I love Africa. So why do you think this railway is bad, Moana? <laughs> You know, this morning when I woke up and I saw that warrior, I thought we were due for the pot. <laughs> well, Jack's been trading with the Mambua for years. They're good friends. Well, I'm glad to hear it. It was you who made him go out and search for us, wasn't it? No. He would have searched anyway. He didn't want to come with us, did he? Well, it's right out of our way, and it is important that we get to the railhead as quickly as possible. Is he a very good engineer? In his field, he's one of the best in the world. But uh, he really doesn't care about much else in life. What are you trying to tell me, Brian? Nothing. I mean... Well, I don't want to see you get hurt, that's all. You're a very nice person, Brian. I promise. I won't get hurt. Try it again. Maradarte. Emto Maradarti. Oh, Emto Maradarti. Emmo Maradarti. Emto Maradarti. Emto Maradarti. Ah, Missouri Sana. What does that mean? Very good, very good. Kasango. Later, Kasango. I'll learn it all. You know something? I think I'm going to stay in Africa. <laughs> it's not all fun. You know, you're right. Kumachi Kuangambi. We'll water the oxen while we can. Any chance for a swim? That fire. Oh, I'm afraid not. Can't we get to Ugoto in time to camp? I don't see why not. There's a bathroom at Ugoto. Watching ladies have baths. You look very pretty. You're trying to embarrass me. I assure you, it isn't working. But it's uh, one of the approaches. You've got a lot of women, haven't you? Well, I've met a lot of women. I wouldn't say that I've known any of them. Tell me, what's the matter with your friend Quarterman? He isn't in love with you. I suppose, in a way, he feels responsible for me. And he thinks that I'm the wrong company when well, maybe he's right. What's this, another approach? The fascination of the dangerous male? It's been known to work. 
You don't know how he hates the idea of your railway. What do you think of it? Well, women are more practical than men. Is it true that it'll run within a mile of the mission? Mm -hmm. It will one day. Oh, well, then I think how wonderful it will be, having our supplies delivered to our front door instead of having to waste six days going to fetch them. Oh, where did you come from? Come on, boy. Like some nice sweet grass. His mother must be somewhere near. as you really are, I think. When you were watching the elephant. <laughs> it was touching. You were like a little boy. You know something? I said that I'd met lots of women, but I hadn't known any. I do feel that I know you all. A little. Oh, well, there's not much to know. I haven't done much, really. Well, it's not what people do, it's what they are. And you are quite a girl. Is this another approach? If it is, I've never used it before. You're being very honest, aren't you? I'm not altogether sure I trust it. I'll tell you, don't. Shall I be honest? I'd like you to kiss me again. Well, that is an approach, if you like. Was that better? How do you mean, better? Well, did it show more respect than last time? Too much, I think. Yeah. You're quite a girl. David, Mr. Quarterman says that. <coughs> what happened? It's a leopard trap. Are you all right? I think so. With your luck, I'm surprised there wasn't a leopard in it. <laughs> <laughs> And find the river love For no one knows just where it flows The river love Once in its rushing tide All your loneliness will be swept aside and though your world's apart, soon you'll both be drifting heart to heart. Sometimes teardrops fill the river love. But when you love, sometimes it's worth the crying of your 
dreams can never end For you'll find love from your river friend So sail the river love Sail the river love You will become part of the river Self to die. something so lonely about death always. There's something pretty lonely about life, too, isn't there? something that frightens you as well. saying, Cassandra? Uh, nothing, Miss Ruth. Just uh, drum talk. We got to cross the river somewhere. It may as well be here. You better see that your stuff in the wagon is secure. You don't want to lose anything. Brian, give him a hand. Yes, sir. Well, Buona, I do not want to frighten Miss Ruth. What do they say? The slave hunters have passed this way. There has been destruction, killing. I thought so. You do well to cross here, Buona. The drums speak of great danger. You are riding in this cart. Oh, honestly, Come damn on it. inside. There's a crocodile within a thousand miles who would have a go at you. <laughs>
across there. It wasn't an easy place at all. We brought it off, that's the main thing. It was because of the drums, wasn't it? Well, let's say it's always better to have those slavers on the other side of a nice wide river. And it's a fine place to camp. What's the matter, Ruth? Nothing. Nothing. I just wanted to think alone, that's all. I don't find it too easy to think when I'm near you. What is it, Ruth? Oh, I'm just being stupid, that's all. Nothing that you could say or do would strike me as stupid. I've read about people falling in love. And I've thought, well, if it's all that wonderful, why are they always so miserable? Now I understand. I don't think you're in love with me, Ruth. Why? Because you don't want to think it? I didn't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. I told you I was being stupid. It's just that suddenly I realized by this time tomorrow you'll be gone. Well, I have to go, you know that. I know. But I could come back. Yes, you could. But are you the kind of a man who does come back, David? Are you? Ruth? Ruth, listen. Mr. Moore, tell me something. How long have you ever stayed faithful to one woman? A week? Two weeks? Sixteen and a half days. At least you're honest. Ruth's a fine girl. Yes, she is. That's why I want you to leave her alone. In your own subtle way, you've made that quite clear. I want you to go away and never see her again, because she's a thousand times too good for you. You know something, Quartermain? If you were a younger man, I'd knock you from here to Mombasa for that. I admit I'm taking advantage of my age. Has it ever struck you you may be misjudging me completely? You know the answer to that better than I do. Am I misjudging you? 
I don't know. People can change. They can, but do they? Do you honestly believe that you could make Ruth happy? I don't know. She certainly isn't very happy just now. We've none of us any right to gamble with other people's lives. You're a strong man and a brave one. But like all selfish people, you're a destroyer. Maybe you're right. What would you like me to do? Vanish into thin air? That might be managed. If it hadn't been for this wagon, we'd have gone on to the mission tonight. As it is, it won't take Kasongo more than a couple of hours to get Ruth there first thing in the morning. Where would we be? You'd be on your way to your blasted railway, and I'd be guiding you. As a matter of fact, there's a route that no other white man even knows about. I could get you there the day after tomorrow. And don't think I don't hate having to help you. I do. You really do love that girl, don't you? Much as I loved her father. All right. But we'd better start before dawn. I can manage that. You'll have to if you don't want me to see her again. Who'd have thought that I'd get the best guide in East Africa after all? What's the matter? I just saw you running. What happened? Sometimes it's good to see things like that. Good? Ruth, what's the matter? Please, tell me. Life looks so beautiful, especially here in Africa. Sometimes you forget how cruel it really is. Oh, come here. I'm afraid she heard us last night. She's pretty upset. So the slavers are not the only people around here who make bargains over human beings. I've taken one of the boys and gone on to the mission. If you send Kasango with a wagon, we can make a nice early start for the railway. There's a postscript. Brian insisted on going with her. What? Brian? Tomari Kuhanga. Tomari Kuhanga. It's Kasango. Would they have made it all right in the dark? At any other time, I'd have said yes, of course. But um, tell my Katie to strike camp and take the wagon to the mission using the old track. Yes, Warner. Uh, you come with Mr. Moore and me. Yes, Warner. Break out ammunition, Kasango. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's all my own fault. I asked for it, didn't I? You warned me I'd get hurt. I don't understand how David could be so callous. It seems we both have a lot to learn. 
Oh, I don't know. You go on leading your own little life as best you can. Maybe it's not very exciting, but it's yours. You know where you are, and you know who you are. And then suddenly... Ruth. Ruth, you're too fine a person to let a man like that do this to you. Now, just forget him. I don't want to forget him. That's what makes me so angry. Oh, it's hard to explain, Brian. When he kissed me, my whole world came alive. Everything became different. But you've got your work. I never told you how wonderful I think it is. This country needs people like you, Ruth. Does it? Does it, Brian? Or do we just fool ourselves into thinking other people need us because we need to be needed? Don't say things like that. It isn't like you. How do you know? I don't even know myself. Perhaps that ignorant, self-contained girl who came all the way down to Edwardstown to collect supplies wasn't... wasn't me at all. I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. Yeah. We can't afford a flood, can we? Anyway, he isn't worth it. I'm sorry. I know. I know you think I'm only a boy and no, I don't... No, I don't. And you're not. You're a man, Brian. And what's more, you're a good one. Let's get to the mission. I'm sure you'll feel a lot different once you get back with your friends. Back at work. you how to behave. You're not a man, you're an animal. A little of both. 
like most men. What kind of a mother gave life to a monster like you? You haven't any human feelings at all. Oh, yes, I have. The will to survive. Our friends will catch up with you. And they'll start by nailing you to the door, because I'll tell them to. Watch your temper. I have one, too. Why, you... <coughs> Roots. Just flavors. They took her. Uh, These men rescued you? Yes. We couldn't get to Ruth. Now, have some of this. Uh, uh, some more? <laughs> now, start from the beginning and tell us everything. Okay. The slavers, they were waiting for us. It was awful. Come on, boy. Tell us. You have to know. They took us down to where the others were, over there in those trees. They were guarding the Africans they captured. And then the Mambuar attack? No. No, that was about two or three miles away. The Mambuas didn't have a chance against all those rifles. But we couldn't get to Ruth. We couldn't help her. Well, well, I hope you're pleased with yourselves. I mean, all that talk about despising the slavers because they dealt in human flesh. Well, it didn't stop you striking a bargain over Ruth, did it? Tsitanga, take care of his arm. Now, what about Ruth? What will they do to her? They'll probably sell her. There's no denying it's been done before. To whom? Where will they take her? The slavers have a rendezvous in the mountains not too far from here. Arab caravans come up from the valley of the White Nile and buy the slaves from them. Do you know the place? 
I've been there ten years ago once. It's called Tambura Kanga, the womb of the world. All right, Kasanga, you don't have to go with us if you don't want to. Tambura Kanga is taboo. In what way, taboo? Devil trees, spirits that live in hollow mountains, or anything you can think of. How's it going, Kasango? I want to get started. Nearly finished, Buana. Can we overtake the slavers? Can we get to Ruth in time? Maybe. With canoes and a prayer. Canoes? Mm hmm. The Galawana village is on the river nearby. The chief is Mr. Quatermain's good friend. <laughs> understands now that he is wrong about your railway. He cannot admit this, so... He and I are a lot alike. Yes. Yes, I think so, too. You know, this is the first time since I met you in London that you haven't been worrying about the railway. Does that surprise you so much? Frankly, yes. You think the railway means more to me than Ruth does? Unless you've changed your mind quite a bit since last night. to teach me how much. Sango. They will go no further. They're taboo. They'll put us ashore, won't they? Oh, yes. They will put us ashore.
Stand up when I tell you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You mistake my intentions, which are strictly honorable. Shall I tell you why they are honorable? You are a valuable piece of merchandise. The fact that you are, um, how shall I put it, so that I am not coarse. The fact that you are somewhat ignorant of the male sex will double your price. Yes, clean and properly dressed. You are going to be quite an attraction in Alexandria, Damascus. Quite an attraction. Meeting place up here? You wouldn't be so surprised if you could see what lies on the other side.
See what's happening in a cave. All these. I'm going to fuse this in 90 seconds. Do you understand? 90 seconds is how much. Now, here, hold this. Jack, give me a knife. As soon as you see the first of the Africans, or possibly Ruth, Run out of the inner cave, you like this. Now, the longer you hold the dynamite, after you've lived it, the better. But not over 90 seconds. You throw it into that tunnel between the two caves and then duck. All right? Got it. You'll be able to see me from down there. If anything goes wrong, I'll tell you. Now remember, as soon as the first one runs out, you light it. Who freed you? Oh. How did tell me?
and find the river love For no one knows just where it flows The river love Once in its rushing tide aside and though your world's apart soon you'll both be drifting heart to heart sometimes teardrops fill the river loves but when you love sometimes it's worth the crying of your dreams can never end for you'll find love from your river friend so sail the river love sail